Friends, I welcome you to my channel. Before listening to this story, I will ask you to like and subscribe. It is not difficult for you, but it is pleasant for me. And we're starting. Tom walked through the front door of his country house in the middle of Wednesday morning. He hasn't been there since last Sunday. All he wanted to do was pick up some things and leave again. He expected his wife Peggy to leave for work. Tom went into the kitchen to make a cup of coffee and noticed the handcuffs and a strip of duct tape still lying on the table where he had left them. The kitchen towel was still on the floor where he had thrown it after wiping his face. The video camera was still on a tripod next to the kitchen table. The chair he had broken and knocked over was still on the floor. Instead of coffee, he opened the refrigerator and took out a bottle of Diet Coke. Where the hell have you been? Peggy asked angrily as she entered the kitchen. Tom didn't look at her and didn't answer. He walked past her into the bedroom to collect some clothes, but she grabbed his arm. I asked you a question, she said angrily. Tom stopped and turned to look at her. The woman he married seven years ago. The woman he loved. But now the woman who devastated him. Let me go, he replied softly. Peg looked at him. There was no expression on his face. Tom's eyes seemed dull and lifeless. She let go of his hand and let him pass. Peg took the handcuffs, duct tape, and a dish towel, then walked over to the trash can and unceremoniously tossed them in. She went to the tripod and unscrewed the mounting bracket, placing the video camera on the table, then folded the tripod and put it next to her. Peggy went into the bedroom. Tom was holding a large open suitcase on the bed and packing his things. What are you doing, Tom? I'm packing, he replied and continued. Another business trip? What is it? She asked sarcastically. No. Then where are you going? Tom stopped and looked at her. His expression was still blank. What does it matter? You're my husband. I have a right to know. Peg, you gave up that right last Sunday afternoon. Tom added a few more items and closed the bag. He picked her up and carried her into the living room, put her near the door, and then went to the study. Peggy followed him. He put some papers from the table into his briefcase and closed it then packed his laptop and power cord into a computer bag. Tom went to the kitchen table and picked up a video camera. He opened it, finding that the SD card was still in place. Is that what you wrote down on Sunday? Peggy smiled. A souvenir of your reckoning. Very thoughtful. Thanks. Tom remained impassive. Tom, damn it! Talk to me! She shouted. Tom looked at her. His face flushed. What did you do to me? Why are you leaving? What is it? She asked. Peg, sit at the table with me. Tom opened his computer bag and put his laptop on the table, then sat down in front of it. He motioned for Peggy to sit next to him. As soon as she sat down, he inserted the SD card into the slot. Let's take a look at this, then we'll talk. Tom started recording. The video showed a chair pushed away from the kitchen table on the right and an empty kitchen table on the left. Welcome home, baby. Let's go to the kitchen. I have a surprise that I promised you on the phone. Tom appeared on stage, smiling. Peggy came up to him wearing a short, thin robe. Her hair and makeup were immaculate, and her feet were bare. She was holding handcuffs in her hands and smiling. Sit on the chair. Tom sat smiling at her. Peggy went behind a chair and squatted down to handcuff him. Her robe fell open, hiding nothing underneath. She put one wrist in a handcuff, threaded a chain through the back of a chair, then secured the other wrist. Peggy walked out of the frame then returned a moment later and taped his mouth with a strip of duct tape. His smile was visible even with the duct tape on. She stood in front of him and dropped her robe on the floor. Tom's eyes widened in admiration at the sight before him. Are you ready for your surprise? What is it? She asked, smiling. Tom nodded. We're ready here, she shouted. A moment later, footsteps could be heard approaching them. Tom turned his head towards the sound. A man wearing Tom's bathrobe entered the room. Tom's smile was replaced by an expression of shock on his face. Honey, you remember Joey from my work, don't you? Peggy walked over to Joey and untied the belt on his robe, then pulled it off his shoulders and threw it into his lap. Joey was naked under his robe. She knelt down in front of Joey and took his semi-erect male organ in her mouth. Oh, damn, it feels so good, Joey moaned. Peggy took it out of her mouth and looked at Tom. It tastes good too, Joey. Are you following us, Tom? I wouldn't want you to miss any of this, she asked with an evil grin on her face. Tom stopped the video and looked at Peggy. Why? You know exactly why. Peggy, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Tom remained impassive. Before we got married, I told you I'd do it. Tom was puzzled. There's no point in what you're saying. 
What did it all mean? Before we got married, I told you that if you ever cheated on me, I would sleep with you in revenge and do it right in front of you. You remember that, don't you? Is that what it's all about? This is your payback. I promised and I did, she said matter-of-factly. Do you think I cheated on you? I know you cheated on me, asshole. Okay, I'll ask. Peggy, when have I ever cheated on you? Don't try to pin this shit on me. You know exactly when, where, and with whom. Tom took out an SD card and put it in his bag. He closed the laptop and put it in his bag, then zipped it up. He turned to face Peggy. Either tell me what the hell you're talking about or I'm leaving right now. Tom was upset. Okay, don't act innocent. While you were on this so-called business trip last week, Jerry's wife Jill called me. She told me that you and Jerry spent a week in bed with a couple of women. Did Jill tell you that? She did it. What evidence did she provide you with? Stop talking nonsense about the poor victim, Tom. You know what you did. So you made love in front of me in retaliation, based on a phone call? From someone I trust. Yes, I did it. Based on her word alone? No actual evidence? I didn't need anything. Peg, you handcuffed me, made love to a man right in front of me, humiliated me, and then poured your liquid in my face and all this on the basis of what someone told you? Payback. That's exactly what I did. Tom shook his head, still puzzled. You didn't tell me why. You didn't talk to me about it. Did you decide that I was guilty and deserved to be punished, and then you carried it out without any evidence at all? Yes, so now we're even. Even? Yes, even. Not that it matters right now, but there are a couple of things I'd like to say. Go on, I'm listening. I've been at the conference all last week. Jerry wasn't even there. He was fired from the band two months ago for having an affair with a secretary in the office, and I haven't seen or heard from him since he left. I was a speaker at the conference. I sat at the table on the stage from 7 in the morning until 10 at night every day of the conference. The whole week was recorded on video. After the meetings, the group met daily until midnight to discuss and plan the next day. I have many witnesses regarding my whereabouts. I never left the hotel until I went to the airport after it was over. So you're denying it? Completely. I don't believe you. Obviously, I have proof of where I've been and what I've been doing all this time. And you really have a phone call from someone who wasn't even there as proof. In my opinion, this is a pretty lousy case. But I believe her. What we believe in does not make it a fact. I believe that I was married to the most wonderful, loving woman in the world. What I found out on Sunday is that I am married to a vicious, vicious woman who thinks so little of me that she both physically and emotionally humiliated me without any actual evidence of any wrongdoing. Peggy didn't answer. I'm leaving now. You'll hear from my lawyer in the next few days. I'm not going to divorce you. That's what it was all about. Now we're even. Peggy, I didn't cheat on you. Weren't you listening? I'm not an idiot. Of course I was listening. Do you still think that what you did was justified? I'm sure. Then we have nothing more to discuss. Just damn it, call Jill and find out what evidence she had. I'd really like to know. Although, in fact, it doesn't really matter right now. Without saying another word, Tom left the house. He went to his hotel room and recorded the video on three DVDs. Tom has already set up a meeting with his lawyer and went to the place where he started the divorce process. The reason for filing the application would be adultery. He gave a copy of the DVD to his lawyer. The prenuptial agreement would be valid and supported by the evidence on the DVD. Tom handed the documents to Peggy himself when they were filed. The lawyer made suggestions on financial matters that should be dealt with immediately, and Tom dealt with them immediately after he left the lawyer's office. His mobile phone was switched to silent mode, and when he got to his hotel room, he checked it. The first call from Peggy came about five minutes after he left, then nothing was heard for about two hours. After that, the calls rang out about every five minutes. He only listened to one voice message, the first one after a two-hour break. Oh my God, Tom. I finally got through to Jill. She was drunk. Please call me. I made a mistake. Please call me. Tom deleted all her calls and voicemails without listening, and then deleted her text messages and emails. The calls, texts, and emails continued. He looked through the numbers as the calls came in. Tom also received calls from Peggy's father, mother, and sister. He called Sean, her father, back. Hi, Sean. This is Tom. I know who the hell it is. You're not the only one who can read. What the hell did you do to my daughter? I didn't do anything to her except that I didn't answer her calls. 
Oh, damn it, she's hysterical. What the hell is going on? Sean, if you want to know what happened, you're going to have to talk to Peggy. I'm talking to you, damn it. He was angry. You're wasting your time. Talk to her. Tom remained calm and courteous to him. Did you make love to someone or something? Talk to Peggy. You son of a bitch. I have to come over and kick your ass. Sean, listen to me. If you want to find out what happened, you'll have to ask Peggy. I'm not going to discuss this with you, Mary, or anyone else. Talk to Peggy. You're a jerk. You really cheated on her, didn't you? Goodbye, Sean. Tom ended the conversation. Sean called back almost immediately, but Tom ignored him. This was quickly followed by a call from Mary, her mother. He deleted their voicemails, then went to dinner and returned to his room for the night. On Thursday morning, he bought a new cell phone, but kept the old one for himself. He went to his office and took a long vacation. He also gave them his new number, but asked them not to share it. When he reached the far end of the city, he rented a small furnished apartment and signed a lease for six months. Tom went to the grocery store to buy groceries and household supplies. By the end of the day, he had put the house in order. His lawyer called on Friday morning. He met with his lawyer at the courthouse, signed the documents, and after filing, he was given a copy for Peggy. Her copy did not require a signature, but his lawyer told him to be sure that there was an impartial witness to what was handed to her. Tom called Peggy, and they agreed to meet for lunch at a restaurant they frequented. When Peggy arrived, Tom was already waiting for her at a quiet table at the back of the room. She was dressed and embellished to the nines. Peggy looked good. When she came over, he stood up. Peggy hugged him, and when she tried to kiss him, he offered only his cheek. It wasn't what Peggy had hoped for, and it was obvious from the look on her face. She sat down at the table facing him. Tom, I made a mistake. I want us to put this behind us and move forward. I agree, it's time to move forward. Tom refused the waiter's services. It was Lynn. They had known her for a very long time. What can I get you to drink? What is it? She asked, smiling. Two Diet Cokes, Peggy replied. Lynn, stay a minute, Tom said. He reached out and took the divorce papers, then handed them to Peggy. Peggy, these are the divorce papers. Lynn is my witness that you were notified. Thank you, Lynn. Peggy paled as she looked at the papers. Lynn went to get their drinks. Tom, you said you wanted to put this behind you and move forward. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm moving forward. But Tom, I made a mistake. That's not what I meant. Peggy, we've been married for over seven years. Until Sunday, those were the most wonderful years of my life. I loved you like I've never loved anyone and probably never will again. Don't throw it away, Tom. We have a wonderful marriage. It was, but it won't be. Last Sunday, you ruined both our marriage and my love. I made a mistake. Can't you see that? Let me tell you what I see when I look at you or when I close my eyes. I see the woman I loved sucking another man's organ 15 centimeters in front of my face. I see her telling me how delicious it is. I see him satisfying her on the table in front of me and telling me how much she likes him and how much a better lover he is than me. I can hear her begging him to satisfy her like a man should, not like I've always done. I see her take it in her mouth again and then show me the liquid on her tongue. I see her ripping the duct tape off my mouth and trying to kiss me, and her mouth is still full of his liquid. I see her spit in my face when I refuse a kiss and then laugh with him about it. That's what I see now, Peggy. Not the woman I cherished. You killed her that day. But Tom, it was all a mistake. No, it was done very deliberately. The reason you did it was a mistake, not the act itself. I told you that if you cheat on me, I will arrange revenge in front of you. You knew what was going to happen and you even agreed to it. Yes, I did it knowing that it would never come to that. What did I tell you would happen if you cheated on me? Peggy looked down at the table. You said you'd divorce me. Did you agree to this? Yes, but I didn't cheat on you. Tom handed her a DVD. This is for you. This is a copy of your not cheating mess with Big Joey. Tom, it wasn't cheating. It was revenge. Lynn returned with their drinks and took their lunch orders. Peggy, making love outside of marriage is adultery, and if both parties have not agreed to it, it is considered treason. We can figure this out, Tom. We're going to see a psychologist. No, Peg, we can't. You showed me the side of you that destroyed the woman I loved. You killed her as surely as if you had cut out her heart. But you didn't do it. Instead, you ripped out my heart. I don't want a divorce. I will fight you. On Sunday, you showed me a different side of yourself. I have another side, too. 
You don't want to see this. From what other side? The side where I become as vicious, indifferent, and vicious as you were on Sunday. I won't use a mistake as an excuse. I will take full responsibility for what I do. You're not like that, and you know it. That's funny. I was thinking the same thing about you. Damn it, Tom, it was a mistake. No, it was a deliberate act of revenge. What did you tell your parents? I told them that we had a falling out and that we would sort it out. A quarrel about what? Peggy looked down at the table and said nothing. Because of what, Peggy? I told them you were having an affair. Have you never told them the truth? Why? They wouldn't understand. Understand what? They wouldn't have realized it was a mistake. Maybe I'm finally getting it. Tom, I know what I did to you was wrong. I based it on judgment rather than fact. I know I've hurt you deeply, but we can get over it. We can rebuild our marriage. We can put this behind us. Okay, we'll leave this marriage in the past. The woman I loved no longer exists. I will fight with you every step of the way. I'm saving our marriage. There's nothing to save here. It's over. Don't make me reveal my other side. You're not going to like this. You're bluffing. Don't insist, Peggy. Hire a lawyer. Ask them to consider the petition. Ask them to contact my lawyer if you have any questions. You'll be single and you can have as many Joeys as you want in 90 days. This has nothing to do with Joey. I'm sorry that was rude of me. I apologize. I'm not leaving you. Peg, you've already done it. The agreement is fair. Accept it and move on. No way in the world. Lynn brought them food. Tom handed her his credit card. She left and returned a moment later with a check to sign. Tom signed his name, then stood up. He never touched his food. Enjoy your meal, Peggy. Last Sunday I lost my appetite when you spat at me. Tom left and went to his house. On Tuesday, Peggy met with her lawyer for the first time. She was a tough nut to crack, recommended by a friend. Have a seat, Mrs. Givens. I'm Ronnie Savage. How can I help you? My husband is trying to divorce me. Did he submit documents to you? What is it? She asked. Last Friday. May I see the papers? Peggy handed her the papers. Ronnie glanced at the first page. He's referring to adultery. Is it true? No, it was a misunderstanding. Did you have sex with someone other than your husband? Yes, but it was a mistake. Did your husband agree to you doing this with another person? Not specifically with this man, but he agreed that I would make love and revenge if he cheated on me. So your husband cheated on you and you made love and revenge? Well, yes and no. Mrs. Givens, could you please clarify this for me? I really had it in revenge, but then I found out that he didn't cheat on me. Your husband didn't cheat, but you still had it in revenge? Mrs. Givens, this is called adultery. But I thought he was cheating. What evidence did you have? A friend told me that he did it. But apparently your friend was mistaken? Yes, finally someone who sees that it was a mistake. Mrs. Givens, based on what you have told me, I am dating a woman who made love in revenge to her husband, based on hearsay evidence. Does he have proof that you were making love to another person? Yes. I handcuffed him to a chair and forced him to watch. Then it's his word against yours. Is there any real evidence? I recorded it all on video. Do you have a copy of this video? Peggy handed her the DVD that Tom had given her on Friday. Can I see this? Peggy nodded. Ronnie inserted the DVD into the player and, after watching it for only a few minutes, stopped it. I'll need to watch the whole thing, but I can do it later. Let me read the petition first. She began to read. After a few minutes, after flipping through several pages, Ronnie looked up. I see that you have signed a prenuptial agreement, and at first glance it seems quite solid when it comes to adultery. If he changes the wording of the complaint to irreconcilable differences, we can avoid this part. I suspect this will be a difficult task. Even with a prenuptial agreement, he offers you significantly more than the law requires. Without a prenuptial agreement, you will most likely be able to receive a significantly larger amount in cash. I don't want a cash payment or a divorce. I want my husband back. Did you tell him that? Yes, he didn't even think about it. Contested divorces can be very expensive for all participants. If we seek advice, it won't hurt. Then let's do it. We can seek advice and let him know that if he refuses, we will fight for everything. Good. Do you have any dirt on your husband? Do you mean criminal stuff? anything. He is as spotlessly clean as possible. Has he ever beaten you or threatened you? He never even raised his voice at me. 
I will deal with the paperwork very carefully, watch the video, and contact you in a day or two. Does he have a copy of this DVD? Peggy nodded. It was Wednesday when Ronnie called her. Mrs. Givens, it's got a pretty solid hull. The video you recorded is very destructive, and you don't want any judge to see it. Let's start with what we discussed. We will offer six-week family counseling. Whatever it takes, I want my husband back. Two days later, Tom's lawyer called him and asked him to come in. That afternoon, he went to the office. Tom, they've requested a six-week couples counseling session. And if I refuse, they will do everything possible to compete with us. I'm against it. What do you think? She hired Ronnie Savage. She's one of the best. Better than you? I'm the best one. Are you ready to fight? With teeth and nails, if necessary. Then let's just say no and see what happens. Keep me informed. That evening, Tom called Peggy. Peggy, I refuse the consultation. I told you that if you argue with me about this, you'll see another side of me that you won't like. Why are you acting like this? Just stop this crazy divorce and come home. Peg, that's not going to happen. This is your last chance to get off easy. I won't call you anymore. I'm fighting you, Tom. I don't want a divorce. Have it your way. Tom ended the conversation. The following Monday, Peggy filed a counterclaim. Irreconcilable differences served as the basis. She asked for everything. Two days later, the local school board and the school where Peggy worked were handed documents about violations of the relationship between their two married teachers, Peggy Givens and Joseph Carr. The package was accompanied by graphic photographs of two people making love. An emergency meeting of the school board was called behind closed doors, and both were fired on the same day. On the same day, Joey's wife received a DVD in the mail with the names and phone numbers of those who starred in the video. She called Tom after watching the video. Hello? This is Tom Givens. This is Tammy Carr, Joey's wife. Did you send me this DVD? Yes, ma'am, I'm sorry, but I thought you had a right to know. When was this done? A week ago, on Sunday, at my house. Are you sitting in the chair? And the video is real? Completely. It is not mounted. Is this woman your wife? At the moment, I filed for divorce. That's all I needed to know. I'm sorry to bother you. Tammy hung up the phone. Tammy's next call was to the divorce lawyer. The next day, Joey called Peggy and reprimanded her for exposing him with her act of revenge, and it cost him his job and possibly his marriage. Even after losing her job and Joey's call, Peggy didn't give up. When another week had passed and there was no word from Tom from his lawyer, Tom took his next step. Peggy's parents and sister received a copy of the DVD in the mail. After a very short introduction to the video, they started asking Peggy questions and telling her off. Tom's old phone rang. He answered her sister's call. How could you, Tom? Peggy loves you. Mandy, she has a weird way of showing it. For God's sake, it was out of revenge. So she still hasn't told you the truth? What the hell is the truth? Mandy, I didn't have an affair. She got a call from a friend who said I did it. She took it as the truth and without any evidence. Was this her revenge? Tom, Peggy's not that stupid. Okay, ask her yourself. Let her know that if she lets the divorce go through with it and stops fighting it, then that's the end of it. If she continues, this is just the beginning. Can't you figure it out? Have you watched the DVD? It's just the beginning, that's all I could digest. Observe all this and then ask yourself if your husband is ready to try to make peace. Will you do it? I will but I still think you should at least try to figure this out. Mandy, you've known me since we were kids. You know I'm not a bad guy. Watch the DVD. Okay, I'll do that. Mandy hung up the phone. About an hour later, she called back. Oh, Tom, I'm so sorry. I understand now, but I still need to talk to Peggy. Let her know that if she stops fighting the divorce, then this will end. If she fights with me, it will only get worse. I'll tell her. Mandy went to see Peggy in person and after receiving confirmation that Tom was telling the truth, relayed his warning. Peggy was adamant in her refusal. Mandy then went and told her parents about what Peggy had done and how Tom had insisted that she drop the counterclaim. Peggy's parents visited her that evening and received copies of both documents. Sean had a family friend who was a lawyer who checked the documents and the prenuptial agreement. His recommendation was that Peggy do exactly what Tom said and quietly take the case to the divorce court. Peggy still refused to give in. After another week, without receiving a word from his lawyer, Tom took the next step. Peggy taught Sunday school at the same church her parents attended. Every member of the women's auxiliary and the church's ministers received a flyer in the mail, 
which contained photos of Peggy making love with a man who was not her husband. The caption read, Should this woman teach your children? On Sunday, Peggy's parents were treated more like lepers than parishioners. After the service, the pastor took them aside for a private conversation and explained why. He also gave them a letter for Peggy, informing them that her services would no longer be needed or even welcomed. A copy of the leaflet was attached. When they gave it to Peggy, she cried, but she dropped her counterclaim anyway. Peggy told her lawyer about what Tom had done. Telling and showing your family was not a crime. This was clearly seen on the DVD where Peggy told Tom that she had made a record for him. Since it was his property, he could share it with any adult he wished. The flyers were sent anonymously, so without a thorough investigation, they could not be traced back to Tom. Ronnie recommended that she drop the counterclaim. Peggy's family begged her to stop it. Now it was affecting their lives. Sean called Tom and shared his concerns. Tom repeated his demand to Sean. Still, Peggy insisted. A few days later, Peggy's neighbors and all their friends received similar flyers signed only with Peggy's name and contact information. Peggy's phone and email exploded with unpleasant calls and messages. Trash was dumped on her car, driveway, and lawn. Tom waited another week before posting the message on her social media accounts. It all started with innuendos. Then it came to photos with blackouts strategically placed in all the necessary places. A few days later, Peggy received an email from the 18 Plus website thanking her for the video. When a news crew showed up at her door, she finally called her lawyer and withdrew the counterclaim. She asked for a meeting between her and Tom. Tom agreed on the condition that it be done at his lawyer's office. They met a few days later. Peggy looked like a shadow of her old self. She had lost weight and, judging by her appearance, was also sleep-deprived. Peggy, Tom said, sitting down at the table across from her. I've dropped the counterclaim. You've won. No, Peggy, I lost. I lost the woman I loved. I lost my marriage. I lost everything that was important to me. You really have a side that I've never seen. I'm sorry you had to see this. Tom, I do not know what to say. I can't show my face anywhere. I'll have to leave even to find a job. I can't stay here either. Everyone we knew treats me like a leper too. We both lost everything, didn't we? Yes, Peg, we did it. Tom's eyes were on the verge of tears. I know it's too late now, but is there anything I can do to fix what I've done? Besides figuring out how to turn back time? Yes, except for that. I don't think so, Peggy. Tom got up to leave. Peggy stood up and held out her arms for a final hug. Tears were streaming down her cheeks. Tom took a step towards her, then stopped. Tears streamed down his cheeks. I can't, Peggy. He stood looking at her for a moment, then turned and headed for the door. When his hand touched the door handle, he turned back to her. There was one thing that could help. What, Tom? Just once, you could say, I'm sorry. Just once. Tom walked out of the office and out of her life.